Join Speaking of Spirits as we talk about death practices around the world. Everybody, this is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and I am here with Gina and Kate and Susie. And we have an interesting topic. Um, we wanted to research death practices um, and burial practices throughout kind of the world. We each took like a portion of, you know, culture. So I thought it would be really cool to do it. So um, you want to start? Sure. Okay. Hopefully I'm going to pronounce this correctly. So I took the Taroha tribe, which is an Indonesian tribe in um, Indonesia, or sorry, indi wow. <laughs> indigenous to okay. Tana. Okay. Got it. Indigenous to where? Tana, the southern okay. part of Indonesia. Okay. Okay. So when someone passes away, they take them into a room. They start preparing them with formaldehyde and water. They have herbs and everything. So it's not too shocking, right? But if they don't start preparing that and then feeding them, so they ritually feed them and um, until they have to bury them. If they're not, if they don't follow those ritual practices, they are only considered ill and not dead. I found that interesting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just ill. <laughs> Not dead. So not dead until they're decayed? Until they're dead. fed. Until they're fed. not dead until you're fed. fed. Until they're <laughs> so if someone just died out wow. in, in the in the bush and they didn't have the ritual going, then it was they were just considered ill, but not deceased. Interesting. Yes. And Sorry. then from there, after that, they will prepare the dead after feeding them, and then they will bury them. Then they'll have kicking competitions where they just go out and like kick each other, and that's part of the ritual. The the living people, yes. The living kick each other. Yes, in the shins. I have no idea why. I didn't reach and in, read into that too much. Okay. But then the following year, they will go dig their um relative up. They will wash them again. They will dress them in nice clothes. They will ritualistically feed them. They will give them gifts. They will buy really nice things for them. They set them up. They have dinner with the family. People come and greet them and talk to them like they're alive. So they do this every year in August, which is like the hoggedest time of the year, um, until they can no longer dig them up anymore. And they're gone. They're decayed. And, and every year, <sighs> along with that, they perform um, ritual animal sacrifice along with it. So I just thought it was really interesting, and I'm not about to go dig up my relatives and no. feed them anything. So that's stay where they're at. Creepy. It's just really interesting. I don't. It would be interesting to watch, but not participate. I no, guess. I've seen a show or something, a documentary where they talked about that, and they actually a lot of people that are it's a it's a form of mummification. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't look decomposed. They look. I mean, almost more like doll-like. Yeah. It's leathery, Mummies. kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. For quite take, a while. Take me off that checklist. Mm -hmm. so you could be digging them up for quite a few years before there's nothing left to dig back up. That's what I was wondering. I was like, what is the rate of decay for a body? I was like, it can't last that long. But if they mummify so. them, Yeah, that well, makes if sense. it's dry and arid and hot, it's a natural mummification process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People, people mummify here mm -hmm. in some certain 
certain situations mm-hmm. or at least parts of their body. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Creepy. Um, so I took some um, Celtic ones and I, I thought it was interesting that um, the Celtic religion, I, I guess maybe like a lot of them, but it really changed over time. So as Christianity took hold and the practices changed, right? So before Christianity, the Celts um, would, um, a lot of people thought that they burned them like the Vikings and they did not. That was, that was not a Celtic thing from what I saw, from what I've read. It was, um, they would sometimes wrap the body in, in bear skin or skins of an animal. Um, they also had tombs, um, very much like Egyptians. They would bury them with their weapons and um, goblets and things, anything that they had of value that they could take to the next life. So I thought that was fascinating too, because um, this was pre, this might've been during um, trading, but I'm not sure it wasn't a common language back then. So how would they have known, like if they even did run across Egyptians, how it was like completely there, they were pretty much cut off. Right. So these practices have some similarity in other parts of the world. So this, be, the, the tombs were very, very prevalent until kind of Christianity hit and then it became burial mounds. Mm-hmm. The cairns. Mm. So, um, but the, the warriors and um, like rulers, they were interred with, with like, like I said, all their possessions or daily possessions and um, they they were found with their weapons, their armor, um, precious items like gold, jewelry, and chariots even sometimes, and wagons. Mm-hmm. Like they would literally put them entombed with that all that stuff. Yeah. That's huge. Well, there's several religious practices that they believe this is the body you live through eternity with. And so you need those items because you may not have the opportunity to get them in the, in the in mm-hmm. eternity or whatever. So, and, and which I love, they were also um, buried with their eating and drinking paraphernalia because they were supposed to have parties in the afterlife. Like it was a big thing, the feasts and all that, that they had. So if they didn't have their eating and drinking utensils, they wouldn't be able to do that in the next life. And I kind of like that. So make sure that, uh, I have my, you know, wine goblets with me. I so to look I to know. To <laughs> yeah. And then curiously, when these items are always found in twos in their tombs, like two goblets and two, whatever it was, it was in twos, like they were expecting someone to be with them. So either like another family member, a member perhaps, of the family, or... or if they, I don't know, um, Somebody was going to be with them. So they, yeah. if they had, maybe if they had company over, I don't know. I, it, the, that was interesting to I me. I like that idea, actually. I kind of like it, it too. It resonates, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so the, also it says that the vessels that had food in them were apparently buried full of food right. and drink. So because there's residue food in them when they were un, un, you unearthed. Know, yeah, unearthed. Yeah. yeah. So when historically you know when we have archaeologists who've gone into some of these these features they've like wow it actually did have food in it so i that that was wild to me um and then there may have been a ritual feast attended by the deceased family and friends before the tomb was even closed so that they partied that's i think where the Celts the wake comes from yeah could be party to send them off yeah mm-hmm. a big feast to, to send them on their way and then um one of the um websites that i went to on um world history encyclopedia if you guys want to look it's on the death and burial and the afterlife in the ancient celtic religion um shows some of the wagons and the golden shoes that one oh that's very cool was uh, buried with um um the the goblets and um that jewelry yeah it's jewelry some of the gold that they had so i thought that was interesting because i had no idea i always in my head i had it that maybe the celts were 
like the Vikings. Yeah. But not at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not at all. So pretty interesting. Although I still think a Viking death would be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what did you have? I did Egypt. Okay. And um, one of the interesting things where you had compared them, um, they were a little, well, I should say their other people were a little more lucky, obviously, in the Celtic tradition. Because in Egypt, especially if you were a pharaoh or somebody of high importance, your people got killed and mummified and put with you. Like if you had a favorite servant or you had a spouse or you had your pets i would say yeah and uh, they found alligators in the tombs and all kinds of things mummified monkeys and cats and they had alligators over there Al oh yeah the, 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 it's the either crocodiles. alligators or crocodiles i don't remember which was which but yeah the nile um has them it's the crocodiles and they actually have just found i think it was like up to 12 like really well preserved ones and they almost look like they just like barely died like they yeah. were perfectly preserved it was amazing yeah well wow. so um I guess there's hippos and everything over yeah. there right so yeah. yeah why not crocodiles yeah the crocodiles in the nile yeah <laughs> i just always think of the nile river it's just so desert but a lot of it isn't it's well, all lush the, yeah the animals. the nile it, it's huge it's yeah. crazy i took a cruise down it and i felt like cleopatra we were on the like we were about yeah two feet above water level and the window had the big sliding glass door and the curtains and you laid on your bed and it was like oh, i could do cleopatra yeah until a, until a hippo knocks your boat over or something. yeah no, no 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 yeah but um if you were royal or pharaoh or those kind of things they had very particular burials which some of you may have heard about where they mummified the bodies and it was a pretty easy process as far as the mummification after the preparation because it was hot and it was dry and that is like perfect um mm -hmm. to create a mummy and it was interesting while visiting new orleans they have similar they cannot put them below ground like we do here in Idaho because of water level and it's very hot and it's very dry and so some of them have um, a three layer vault and they put the new ones at the mm -hmm. top and when they're ready for to put the next one in they move them down mm -hmm. and then they take who was ever there and put them in a box and put them in the bottom and you can have full families inside these vaults but with the Egyptians they had priests that would take and prepare the pharaoh's body and one of the kind of interesting things that they did is they would remove particular organs and I want to look here just to make sure I say them right and they would place them in canopic jars this obviously is not not an actual one but this is one that was carved out that I got when I was over there and they would have four they would have specific gods on the heads depending on which organ was inside of it but they would put your lungs in one your liver your intestines and your stomach and some people would go isn't the heart like the most important part but that was left in the body and the reason it was left in the body is when you went to the underworld they would weigh your heart against a feather and if you were a good person and you were generous and you were kind and you were fair and your heart did not weigh more than the feather, you would get to go to eternity. And if it did, this hippo god, I can't remember his name, would eat you. Oh. And so that is why one of the canopic jars does not hold the heart because that was what they used to determine if you were a good person or not. The other thing um, that I found really interesting is... They don't necessarily mummify people still. I would imagine maybe the elite people could afford that. There was, um, it's definitely a third world country when you get there. There's the very poor people and then those who were more wealthy. But it's still so dry and arid. A lot of times the cemetery is a desert area. We stayed in Saqqara, which is where they've recently found um, some, I don't even know, tombs and and different kinds of um, historical burial sites of people that they think possibly were some who did the hieroglyphs in the tombs and in the temples and those different kinds of things. But their cemetery, I don't know that they referred to it as that, obviously in Arabic, but um, they would often wrap them in like a gauze or a mm -hmm. linen type thing and put them in the sand. And... Um, there wasn't like designated headstones, anything like that. It was more like the poor person 
burial. Papyrus grave. Yeah. Um, when we were in Giza, there was a more distinct, like you could see plots or you could see where individuals were buried. And I'm assuming those would be the people that had maybe more money that they mm. could purchase the space rather than you just kind of get recycled mm -hmm. with the rest. Um, it's very interesting because we have such a different way that we do things, but like the Jewish belief system, Catholic belief system used to be, this was the body you spent eternity in. That's why you weren't supposed to get tattoos and piercings. And like the Jewish people, they don't get embalmed. They're supposed to be buried within 24 hours. And I, I told my husband, who's Jewish, I'm like, yeah, if you want to go ahead and keep that body, be my guest. But I want mine cremated. I want him to go, oh, we need to get a different one. But they used to believe that if you were cremated or like the Vikings or whatever, there was no body for you to be in in eternity. So it's, it's very interesting because there are similarities in different cultures and religions. And then there's very different, mm -hmm. completely contradictive ways of things being done. But yeah, when my husband got his tattoos, his mother brought how to fit. <laughs> and he's got, he's got three now. He's got one on each arm and then one on the back of his leg. And you are defacing the temple of God. That is your temple that your soul resides in. What so. is this, Gina? This is a scarab. And I brought this because they would use these sometimes. Um, they're little beetles. But they've been around forever, and oftentimes they would eat the flesh off of some of the bones. But this has got the hieroglyphs on both sides of it, and it was carved. And these would be the little vendors on the side of the road that would attack your tour bus and wanting you to buy things. But I've always, yeah, I've always been fascinated by the scarabs. And uh, in, <laughs> I can't even remember what town we were in. But the guy was telling us he was the great, 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 great grandson. Of, oh, it was Memphis. There you go. Um, great, 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 great grandson. And he had real scarab beads that were used. And we're like, uh, yeah, okay. I didn't bring that one, but it's really funny. But yeah, the um, and they often had curses. Like if you paid attention when they um, brought up King Tut. There were mm -hmm. booby traps and, mm -hmm. and different things like that. And speaking of um, superstitions, mm -hmm. that they would have like acid that mm -hmm. would come out when people tried to open things. And like with the canopic jars went in a square kind of um, a box type thing. And each one had its own special place in there. And the awful terrible people throughout time that robbed the tombs mm -hmm. and stole the bodies and different things like that it was it's no wonder that they would want to put kinds of curses but i don't know if i would call it a curse or more the right. be trap kind of thing so i always cool. found it interesting when i studied history that they didn't keep the brain no they actually would take a hot metal <laughs> poker yeah, and pull it out stick it up the nose like do a, a lobotomy crochet hook yeah and it's pull like it all out yeah, and sometimes people were alive when they did that. Yeah, it was a form of torture. Yeah, of or burying death. them, like my favorite movie, The Mummy. Yeah, which I was totally disappointed in the movie when I got to Egypt because the things they showed and they said were certain certain places. I'm like, that is not next to the <laughs> Nile. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, while we keep talking about the Vikings, I tend to pick specific areas. So yeah, I chose the Vikings. I think everyone knows the boat burning, right, that they would decorate it with um, people, animals, um, personal effects, that kind of thing, send it off into a body of water and set it aflame. But that was actually, I think they think that it was more reserved for people who were higher up or, of course, if you were closer to a body of water. They actually did do burial mounds mm. more than anything. Um, part of this is for uh, wedding ceremonies the groom would go to a male ancestor's tomb and grab his sword to give to the bride because she would be carrying on the family lineage. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, well, I guess as cute as grave robbing can be, right? right? I guess. <laughs> Own family, right? Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, they were, um, they really revered their pets. So you would often find horses, dogs, other animals buried with them. And whatever job that they had, they would have tools of their trade with them too. Mm -hmm. So if you were a warrior, of course, you would have your sword. There's also a board game that they used to play that they believed the better you were at at it, the better you were at at strategizing with war. Um, wow. Yeah, it's pretty that. cool. Yeah, it's a kind of a hard game to learn. I bought one and they've like did it as well as they can to what they used to play. But the other thing that was really big is that they would get hell shoes. So the Christian concept of hell, they believe, came from the Norse god, goddess hell. Um, and she took the majority of people. So we've heard of people going to Valhalla when they die, if they die a warrior's death. Um, but you would get hell shoes because there was a road you had to walk on to get to the goddess hell and to live in her underworld right. hall. Yeah, and it wasn't dark or scary or anything like that. They did say it was cold, but that was about it. Um, for the warriors that died... Um, people think they went to Valhalla, but Freya actually got to claim the first half of the Fallen, and then the rest would go to Odin's Hall, Valhalla. So, mm. very cool stuff. Yeah, I love the Viking stuff. Yeah. It's very neat. One of my prized possessions, I have a pendant from what they believe to be a sorceress's grave. And I don't know if it really is. They don't know what to explain it as, but they keep finding these duck feet pendants and no one knows what the significance is because the Norse didn't write down anything. Yeah. Yeah. Verbal history. Verbal yeah. history on all, a lot of that Celtic Norse. And yeah. it, it's hard, very limited anything really. So that's why I always caution people. If you're buying books and you're diving into the stuff, it's, it's interpretation, assumptions. it's assumptions, yeah. interpretations, because there really wasn't a written language. And a lot of it's been Christianized because the monks would write everything down. And so yep. you also have to take a look at it um, with that perspective, because, you know, they were trying to show that these other ways or pagans were bad people. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful about what you believe and you kind of just got to go with what you feel is right. Like, yeah. yeah. How else do you do it? Right. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I found interesting watching the Viking series, even though obviously sure. it's not literal, it's not very but the people and different things like that, it was a lot of the Viking or the lot. The Vikings were the ones who traveled to other countries. The It's Norse and it's right. Scandinavian kind mm -hmm. of people but a lot of them converted to christianity yeah they did um one of them became i want to say it was a king of france because he ended up marrying a it queen uh-huh and it, but in order to do that he had to be christian they did have um a king too at one point that really forced christianity upon the people like it was either accept this or die kind of mm -hmm. thing Ugh. and so that was christianity pretty much everywhere yeah right? If it wasn't the like Church of England, it was right. the Catholicism, and it was like you will be Christian or we will kill you. Mm -hmm. Even though we say Christianity, you're not supposed to do that. You know, it was like it was saving right. the soul. They believed that by taking the person's the heathen's life. You know, and it's like how contradictory. To yeah, your, exactly what your what you say your moral compass is. So, I have a question. So you said you'd prefer to be cremated, mm -hmm. right? How about you two? Me, cremated. Um, cremated, but I would like to be, they have this program where they can turn you into a base for coral for replacing mm -hmm. the coral reefs. And so I think that would be cute because then family can go scuba dive to like your spot and just kind of enjoy that. And I think it's really unique. Mm -hmm. you? So I, well, there's one I always tell my kids. But there's one that I found interesting where you can actually be put in a mycelium bag, but it's only in Washington, and you can actually come back as mushrooms or as a tree because they have the tree ones. Well, but, they'll do the tree mm -hmm. across the U.S. now. Oh, good. But but I always tell my kids, just kick me down a hill, let the coyotes have mm -hmm. me, and I'll come back as a turtle I've always next said, time. <laughs> up in Yellowstone, let the bear have it. Yeah. But um, there actually is, if anybody's interested, there's a wait list. So I don't know how you know when you're going to die, you know. <laughs> We're all on the wait list. <laughs> yeah, but in Colorado, they are doing Viking deaths up there. They're Viking burials in a lake. 
there's a wait list for it. So I don't know if you have to be frozen until then, you know, kind of thing. You prepay and then you're, but they do, they have a permit to do Viking, the burning on a raft. They put you on a raft and send you out and Bring burn you up. a lot of environmental questions. For me. Well, they have, that's why they have, it's a limited number. I don't know why it's, it, it's going into the microbes of the yeah. of the lake. No formaldehyde. No. Formaldehyde. Yeah. No, no. 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 You couldn't. Yeah. yeah you couldn't no. have probably have any of that. But mm -hmm. you probably could be frozen until such time you could. Mm -hmm. Your number came up on the list. You know. Yeah, probably all uh, natural things. No yeah. Plastic. Yeah. They have a whole. They have a whole list of stuff. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's only in Colorado, from what I've seen. So very cool. Yeah. yeah. No, I told my kids cremate me. I don't need a. They hate going to the cemetery. They hate going to see. You know, being there. I love cemeteries, but <laughs> I'm like scatter me everywhere because then anywhere you go, mom's going to be there. So you don't have to be in a particular place and anything like that. Yeah. Because like I said, I'm checking this body out. I'm gonna take a new model when I right. need it. So, well, ladies, whenever two or more. Maybe. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Whenever two or more women get together, yes. amazing, amazing things happen. You've been listening to Speaking of Spirits, powered by Pocatello Paranormal Research in Pocatello, Idaho. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you could be here. If you're enjoying the podcast, please do us a favor and go to whatever platform you are listening to the podcast on and give us a review. We prefer the five-star reviews. This helps us know how we're doing, and it helps others to find the podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on our next podcast.